Let's keep reading Diary of a Wimpy Kid, okay. The Deep End. We're up to Sunday, I believe. Here we go. It turned out the whole camp was early to bed, early to rise. We didn't even need to set our alarm clocks because our neighbours let us know when it was time to get up. Believe it or not, some guy was doing wood carvings at his campsite. I wanted to give him a piece of my mind, but when I saw the chainsaw, I figured maybe I could let it slide this time. <laughs> After Dad got out of bed, he started cooking pancakes and eggs on the girdle. On the griddle. Ah. Mum was just getting back from the bathhouse and she gave me the scoop on how things worked up there. She said you had to pay for the shower with quarters and gave me a few. Then she told me that I needed to stop by the laundromat and remove and move our clothes from the washer to the dryer. I really didn't like the idea of taking a shower in a public building. When you live in a house with your family, the bathroom is the only place you can get any privacy. So when I'm in there, I'm in my own little world. And, I, and once that door's locked, I can do anything I want. Are you almost done in there? Jiggle, jiggle. I'm flossing. But sometimes I get myself in trouble in the bathroom. Once I almost broke my ribs when I was pretending to be Spider-Man in the shower. <laughs> when I arrived at the bathhouse, the line was already wrapped around the building and I got to know my fellow campers a little better than I wanted to. I figured the line would split at the entrance and guys would go one way and girls would go the other. But it turns out the place didn't have those kinds of bathrooms, uh, didn't have those kinds of boundaries. I found out the reason the wait was so long was because there were only three shower stalls inside. When it was finally my turn, I put a quarter in the coin slot on the stall door and that got the shower going. The water, the hot water felt good, especially since I hadn't had a shower in a few days. Ah, but I couldn't really enjoy it since the stalls only went so high. <laughs> <clears throat> I closed my eyes and tried to pretend I was by myself, but that was kind of hard to do when the person in the next stall started getting chatty. Is that raspberry silk shampoo? Sniff, sniff. I decided to wrap things up and get out of there, but the shower stopped before I had a chance to rinse the shampoo out of my hair. Boing. It turns out one quarter only paid for three minutes of hot water. I tried to, to hand the next person in the line a quarter to put in the slot, but I couldn't get his attention. So I stepped out of the shower to put the coin in myself, but I guess that was just the opportunity this guy was waiting for. Zip! Oh, man. And what really stunk was when he started using my shampoo. I didn't feel like getting into an argument with a naked guy, so I left. But some soap suds with some, but some soap suds got in my eye, and I could barely see where I was going. Luckily, I found my way back to the laundromat, where there was a sink, and that water was free. Fizz. Once I finished rinsing the shampoo out of my hair, I started looking for our clothes. But someone had taken them out of the washing machine and dumped them on the floor so they could put their clothes in. Donk. After I put our clothes in the dryer, I decided I was going to stick around the washing machines and find out who dumped our stuff on the floor when they came back for theirs. But when I saw who it was, I thought maybe I could let it slide this time. Mm. When I got back to our campsite, all I wanted to do was crawl back into bed. But mum said we were going down to the lake and I needed to put on my bathing suit. I reminded her that I didn't have a bathing suit anymore and I was hoping that would get me off the hook. But Mum and Roderick had a spare, and even though I'm not a fan of wearing someone else's clothes, I knew there was no point in debating her about it. I figured if we splashed around the lake for a few minutes and acted like we were having a good time, Mum would be satisfied and let us go back to camp. But she brought her camera with her, and that always complicates things. This summer, Mum's been spending a lot of time on social media, and wherever she sees the perfect, whenever she sees how perfect her friend's family looks, it makes her jealous. So Mum always puts us in these awkward poses to make it look like we're having a good time too. But there must be something wrong with my family because we never get our act together. Uh, the lake looked calm and peaceful when we first saw it from the bridge, but today it was a whole different scene. 
I was expecting the lake to be clear, like the one in the fish hatchery, but it looked dirty to me, and that's probably because people weren't just using it for swimming. Oh no, it's delicious. I thought people were acting kind of nuts at the pool yesterday, but the lake was at a whole different level. There was a rope swing attached to a big tree that went over the water, but I wasn't planning on using that thing unless it rained for a few days first. <laughs> there were some rafts floating in the middle of the lake, and I thought about grabbing one, but I changed my mind when I saw how people were using them. Oof. There was a ramp at the bottom of Big Hill by the lake, and I couldn't tell what that was for, but my question got answered when some kid launched himself into the water inside a tractor tyre. Mum wanted us to, to all to swim, but I was pretty, still pretty scarred from my last experience in a lake. Plus, I didn't trust any water I can't see through. There was something weird sticking up in the middle of the lake, and I pointed it out to Dad. He said it was probably just a branch, but it didn't look like a branch to me. And when, uh, <clears throat> and when you can only see a part of something, it could be anything. Mm. Nobody else was in the mood to swim either, so we put our stuff down on the ground, but it turned out a lake shore isn't the same as a beach shore, and within a few seconds we were sinking in the muck. Blech. Mum said we weren't going back to our campsite until we did something fun. There was a canoe tied up at the dock, and she said we should take it out on the water. I was fine with being on top of the water, as long as I didn't have to go in it. We took turns getting into the canoe, which wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. I stayed low, just like Dad told me to. Roderick didn't, though, and we almost capsized while we were still tied to the dock. After we were in the canoe, I put on life jackets. We put on life jackets and paddled out on the water. But some people swimming nearby seemed like they were in a hurry to get out of our way. Hmm. Then we found out why. As soon as we got to the middle of the lake, something big landed right next to our canoe, and a second later, there was another splash. Some teenagers were up on the hill. Um, had turned a hammock into a giant slingshot and they were using us for target practice. Oh no. Oof. I guess that explained why no one was using the canoe. We tried to paddle back to the dock, but the guys on the hill were getting more and more accurate with each shot. I guess Roderick didn't want to get hit, so he decided to abandon ship, and that was a problem for the rest of us because, because now we were unbalanced. Splush. Our canoe capsized, and somehow me and Dad ended up underneath it. At first I thought it was a good thing, since we were protected from the watermelons. But I changed my mind when we took a direct hit, because it was like being inside the middle of a drum. Clong! Me and Dad ditched the canoe and swam for the dock, and, but, and we had to move fast, because now we were out of range, so the guys on the hill were skipping their shots. Splish, splish, splish. We pulled ourselves onto the dock where we were safe. Mum was upset because her camera was ruined, but I didn't really want my picture taken right at that moment anyway. Pant.